Hi, I'm Jacqueline Hansen, and welcome to Car Stories. Today we're here with John K. Vushek, and behind us here is his 1958 Packard Hawk, and we're going to have a few words with him today about it. Um, so first and foremost, John, how did you acquire the Packard Hawk? Well, I worked for a fellow in Gross Point for about 24 years, and he had it sitting there, and it was just dwindling away, and I asked him to, if, if, if he wanted to sell it. And he said he already sold it to a fellow in Gross Point. And uh, so that was the end of the sale for me. But then two weeks later, the fellow that bought the car, wanted to buy the car from him, he says, He'll buy the car if he'll put an exhaust system. He's, this fellow here had a lot of money, and he says he was not interested in putting an exhaust system just to sell the car. Mm -hmm. So then he asked me if I was still interested. I says, yeah. So he sold me the car, and uh, ever since then, the car sat in my garage for a couple of years until my young guys got after me to start rebuilding it. Oh, your boys asked you to rebuild it? Oh, yeah. They were interested well, in it? I was okay. working afternoons. I, it was kind of hard, so most of the work I was doing, like, after work, you know, in the morning or in the weekends. Okay. But that was my crew. <laughs> All, everybody, the family, right. yep. Um, when did you decide to restore the vehicle? What year was that? Well, I bought the car in 74, late 74, and I think we started on late, maybe middle 76, and by 80, we had it pretty much going. Okay. And was it a complete restoration? Did yes. you tear everything apart and rebuild yes. all the parts piece yes. by piece? How long did the restoration take? Oh, well, I would say maybe three years, three and a half. Okay. And you replaced all the parts, even the engine, everything? No, we, we rebuilt most of it. The car only had less than 50,000 miles on it. Okay. And I think it only has 52,000 now, so we're averaging maybe three or four thousand, hundred miles every year. Uh, year on it. That's not bad at all. Um, were the parts easy to find? No. Did you find difficulty, really? <laughs> yeah. I, anytime I looked for a part, then the fellow would look at me and then he'd start looking at the sky and he's always, and I'm, before you know it, he has got me looking at the sky. I thought a Zeppelin or an airplane went by and I asked him, why are you looking at the sky? And he says, well, I'm trying to figure out what price I should charge you. I told him, why don't you look at the devil? <laughs> there you go. That's a more reasonable offer. Now, this restoration, as you mentioned, was a family affair. Oh, yeah. So you had all the boys in on it. Yes. The, okay. the car was restored right in the backyard, even the paint job. We, okay. we didn't have no spray boot or anything. The 1958 Packard Hawk was a last gasp effort to salvage the once proud automotive manufacturer from extinction. Although similar looking to Studebaker's 1957 tail fin Golden Hawk, the Packard Hawk was distinguished in key ways. The Hawk front hood was one of the first uses of fiberglass. This lighter than metal hood was aerodynamically low to the ground. This increased the stability of the then fastest, flat out, top end sports car of the time. In fact, the supercharged Packard Hawk was the fastest production vehicle in Packard's history. Packard is spelled out in capital letters on the low slung grille top. The body line sweeps back to a tall windshield that travels farther back to golden fins with a fake spare tire lid on the trunk. The fins house the tail lights and backup lights. Flat oval exhaust tips round out the back. Motivating the 1958 Packard is a 289 cubic inch cast iron V8. The engine produces 275 horsepower at 4800 RPM and 333 pound feet of torque at 3200 RPM. Fed by a two-barrel Stromberg downdraft carburetor and a McCulloch supercharger. Mated to a Borg Warner Flightomatic automatic transmission, this leads to the Packard limited slip differential, known as TT. Braking comes via a four-wheel power assist Wagner hydraulic system. The Packard interior featured all other seating with matching interior trim made of Naga hide. The engine turn dashes housed a Stuart Warner tachometer and supercharger manifold gauges. The speedometer showed a top speed of 160 miles per hour. And, exclusive to the Packard Hawk, padded armrest mounted outside the windows. Electric windows and power seats were optional extras. Only 588 Packard Hawks were produced, and approximately 100 survived. 
This makes this Packard quite collectible. Um, how did each family member contribute, each of your sons? Well, whatever, uh, whatever I knew about, I passed it on to them, and they got better as they grew up. They, they were all maybe 14, 15 years old when we started on that. So, but uh, I'm very proud of all of them right now. Hi, we're here with John's pit crew, a.k.a. his sons, and let's find out who we're speaking with. Eldest to youngest. Who's the oldest? Kevin Wojcik. Ken Wojcik. Second oldest. Kerry Wojcik. Fourth. <laughs> and Kelly Wojcik, youngest. Okay, um, tell us a little bit about your influences and how your environment as children came to be where you are today with your interest in cars and all the elements that you've taken on with that. Well, I think I was around the age of 14 and my father was teaching us how to work on cars. He did a lot of bumping and painting when he first started uh, helping us out here. Uh, he, we were bumping and painting cars before we knew how to ride a bike. <laughs> so, uh, my brother Ken here, him and I started uh, NHRA Racing, B-Modified Cabrero. So, we started building cars. Uh, my dad actually was a pretty good uh, bump man and uh, collision man. He actually taught all of us how to bump and paint cars, and as we got older, we progressed and got into the collectible cars. Hi, I'm Ken. Uh, my influence through the family, my dad, uh, great mechanic. And I always, I always saw that in, in his eyes that I got four sons and, and a daughter, and they're all going to be somewhere, somewhere involved with cars, and to this day we are. And uh, my brother and I, uh, back in the uh, 17, 18, we decided to build a drag car. And my dad said, you guys don't have enough money to do that. And somehow we scrounged and we uh, got our money together. Every nickel, dime, dollar we could save, we put into that car. And it was one proud papa when that car went down the track for the first time. <laughs> so uh, he says, yep, you guys know what you're doing. So after the drag car, uh, which was basically a money pit, <laughs> Uh, we, we got smart and started restoring cars, collectible cars. And uh, my interest was in uh, my very first car was a 49 Oldsmobile. And uh, it started from there. I had an old car, bought for under $25 and built it up. It was a, a super sleeper for the street. It was actually a car that looked like it went slow, but it was very fast. And then I uh, evolved into uh, a Corvette, 58 Corvette, so one of the cars had to go, and that was my very first car, which I didn't want to get rid of, but I had to, it was a lack of room, and uh, started restoring a Corvette. And uh, it was really a, a great experience because I took that car completely apart and did all the restoration myself. I had a little help from uh, a few friends. Uh, my younger brother Kelly did some uh, help with me, and uh, basically I want to take every nut and bolt out of the car and put it back together and say, I did it. So. Uh, that was my, uh, my, my best influence for my father for our mechanical background. Well, I'm Kerry and uh, I'm number four. As you can uh, tell, I'm pretty much forced into this because <laughs> <clears throat> I was in my early teens when uh, it all was coming about. I was more or less looking in the sky, looking to fly jets and stuff like that. But as the family progressed with antique cars and things like that, I took more of a, a goal with that. So. Uh, I had a few cars in my high school years. I had a, a 70 Dodge Challenger, it was my first car. Uh, purchased it for $800. My dad put the Hemi orange color on it and uh, it was one of the fastest cars in high school that, uh, that I went to. And uh, then I picked up on a 67 Corvette, uh, 427, that uh, should have kept that car, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> moved on to other cars and stuff like that. And uh, anyways, I, I put 20 years, I'm working on 20 years in the Navy, so I. I kind of put the bolt together and, uh, and uh, well, I learned a lot from my father. He, uh, mechanical wise, uh, I, between my brothers, I said, uh, we could pretty much do anything, anything that could be bolted or unbolted or designed, anything. We uh, come from a great mechanical family. So uh, not that I was really forced into this, but I, I really enjoyed, you know, our, uh, our family life and all that. It was, it's, I wouldn't give it away for anything. I am Kelly, I'm the youngest, and uh, through the roots of my brothers, uh, well, it's made me what I am today. I uh, own a bump shop, and uh, earlier in my days, uh, going out to the drag strip with my brothers, uh, I believe I got a lot of interest into the cars, and made me what I am today, and uh, 